Saint Cecilia is the patron saint of music. She lived in the second or third century in Rome or Sicily. When the time came for her marriage to be consummated, Cecilia told her husband Valerian that she had an angel of the Lord watching over her. He would see the angel if he would go to the third milestone on the Appian Way and be baptized by Pope Urban. By preaching, she had converted 400 people whom Pope Urban forthwith baptized. Then Cecilia was arrested and condemned to be suffocated in the baths. She was shut in for a night and a day, and the fires were heaped up and made to glow and roar their utmost. But Cecilia didn't even break out into perspiration through the heat. When the governor heard this, he sent an executioner to cut off her head in the bath. The man struck three times without being able to sever the head from the trunk. He left her bleeding, and she lived three days. Crowds came to her and collected her blood with napkins and sponges whilst she preached to them or prayed. At the end of that period she died and was buried by Pope Urban and his deacons. In her honour, the National Academy of Santa Cecilia was founded by Pope Sixtus V in 1585. The 19th century saw the installation of pipe organs in thousands of parish churches in Britain. This was often to the great consternation of the musicians and minstrels who had led the singing of the metrical psalms on their stringed instruments, usually from the west gallery of the church. The minstrels often played in the local inns over the weekend and were at times somewhat unreliable because of this. In 1683, the Musical Society was formed to counteract the Puritan view that music, sacred or secular, was a dangerous activity. There was an annual service in defence of cathedral music with a new anthem written for the festival. St Cecilia's feast day became famous for musical concerts and festivals that occasioned well-known poems by John Dryden and Alexander Pope, music by Henry Purcell, Marc Antoine Charpentier, George Friedrich Handel, as well as Benjamin Britten, who was born on her feast day. Paul Simon of Simon and Garfunkel wrote a song, Cecilia, about the difficulty of songwriting, which we might sing for you another day. Welcome to All the Pleasures was commissioned by the Musical Society to celebrate St. Cecilia's Day in 1683. Purcell wrote this piece aged only 24. Here we hear the final section in a consort of voices.
The poem, A Hymn for St. Cecilia, by Ursula Vaughan Williams, praises the patron saint of music and was written for the livery club of the Worshipful Company of Musicians to mark Herbert Howell's mastership of the company in 1959. The company once had control over all musical performance in the city. The piece carries the singer along on a tide of increasing emotional energy and leaves the impression of being a piece much bigger than its constituent parts. Ursula Vaughan Williams wrote, My Saint Cecilia is a girl in one of those magical gardens from Pompeian frescoes, a romantic figure among colonnades and fountains. Herbert's tune takes her briskly towards martyrdom. This next piece, A New Song, is a setting of Psalm 96. James Macmillan has a distinctive style, writing contemporary classical choral music with a Scottish twist. The words of the psalm's opening verse are heard three times, each more ornamented in the Scottish folk style than the previous. The piece combines simplicity and grandeur, saving the great acclamation of majesty for the end when the organ part emerges in a thrilling blaze of glory.
Perhaps the most famous prayer associated with music comes from the pen of John Donne. Bring us, O Lord God, at our last awakening, into the house and gate of heaven, to enter into that gate and dwell in that house, where there shall be no darkness nor dazzling, but one equal light, no noise nor silence, but one equal music, no fears nor hopes, but one equal possession, no ends nor beginnings, but one equal eternity, in the habitations of thy glory and dominion, world without end. Amen. John Mason was a 17th century English Calvinist hymn writer influenced by George Herbert. He had a vision of the songs and splendor of heaven. He contrasts this with the inadequacy of his own praise. The last verse of his hymn reflects a saying of St. Augustine of Hippo, God is an infinite circle whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere. The composer, Kenneth Naylor, was director of music at the Lees School, Cambridge, which is built on land called Co Fen. I used to cross the very same fen when, as vicar of Newnham, I would walk or cycle into the centre of Cambridge. We finish with a setting of perhaps the best-known musical psalm, Psalm 150, which is sung to a chant by the Reverend George Surtees Talbot, one time a vicar choral at York Minster and later vicar of Huntingdon in York. Psalm 150 calls upon everything in the created or constructed world to unite in the praise of God. This is the aspiration of all who identify with Saint Cecilia, to turn all into Alleluia. <laughs> 